ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له indeed all praise is to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we thank him we seek his assistance we worship him and we seek the guidance from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Whoever is guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one can misguide. And whoever does not receive the guidance from Allah, no one can guide. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was his messenger and the servant of Allah. My dear Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Qur'an, Ya ayyul ladhina amunu attaqu allaha haqqa tukate wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimu. That all you who believe, be mindful of your duties towards Allah and you shall not depart from this world other than in a state as a Muslim. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the gift of this deen that he has blessed us. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the guidance that He has blessed us with. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that today in this country, in our country, we can come here and worship as the way we like. We thank that the founding fathers had this vision of the First Amendment to give all Americans from all faiths and all backgrounds the freedom to worship their faith. This is the right that is today, alhamdulillah, because of this right, we are gathered here in front of the embassy of Myanmar, Burma, to register our protest that what is happening in Burma, the killing of Rohingya Muslims, is totally unacceptable. It is a genocide. It is an ethnic cleansing that is taking place. And today, that is the purpose, and I thank all of you for coming here today. Our Muslim brothers and sisters, and our brothers and sisters from other faiths as well, who are joining us today here in this rally in front of the embassy of Myanmar. My dear Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahi rahman ar-rahim, inna Allah ya'amara bil والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفعشاء والمنكر والبعض يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون الله سبحانه وتعالى says indeed Allah orders justice and good conduct and good and giving to relatives and forbids immorality and bad conduct and oppression he admonishes that perhaps you will be reminded it is our duty, it is an obligation, my brothers and sisters, as commanded by Allah. It is a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we establish justice. We strive for justice, not only for justice for ourselves, for our families, for our communities, but justice everywhere in the world. And that is what brings us today, that we see injustices taking place in Burma. We see injustices taking place in the form of burning of villages. We see injustices taking place in the form of killing of innocent civilians. We see injustices taking place in Burma, the raping of Muslim women. These are the atrocities that are happening today. That is what brings us today, that we are gathered so that we can raise our voices against this oppression that is taking place in Myanmar. My brothers and sisters, Narrated by Abu Sayyid al Khudri that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whoever amongst you see an evil, he must change it with his or her hand. And if he has not the ability to do so, he must talk against that oppression or injustice with his or her tongue. And if he can or she cannot do that, then they must feel bad in their heart about that. That is the weakest of the Iman. We are Alhamdulillah gathered here because this country gives us the freedom to have free speech and give our voice for those millions of Rohingyas who have no voice. 
to stand up and ask for the rights that millions of Rohingyas today in Myanmar, has, they have no rights. We are, as Muslims, as Rasulullah pointed us towards our relationship with one another, it's like the relationship of a body. That if one part of the body feels the pain, the whole body experiences that pain. Today, Muslims in Burma are being killed, being tortured, being thrown out of their homes and villages, and we are feeling that pain. And that is why we are here gathered in Washington, D.C. to raise our voices against that oppression. I remind myself and all of us, my brothers and sisters, and I remind all of my fellow Americans with the words of Martin Luther King, who once said that injustice happening anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Injustice happening anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Who are Rohingyas? And what is our relationship with Rohingyas? What has brought us here so that we are raising our voices for these oppressed people as the human rights organizations consider Rohingyas the most oppressed people in the world today? Rohingyas are indigenous people of Burma living in their censor in their land for thousands of years. There are about two million Rohingyas, out of which one million, because the atrocities that is happening in Burma, almost one million Rohingyas are no longer in their own land. They have been pushed out and sent in many different parts of the world. According to the 1982 citizenship laws, which were brought by the military, Rohingyas were denied the citizenship of Myanmar. While we also see that almost 150 other ethnicities in Myanmar were given the citizenship rights, or the only community and ethnic group that was not given the right were Rohingyas. And because of that, today, almost over 1 million Rohingyas, they do not have the rights to citizenship. The UN regards them as the most persecuted people in the world. According to a report by U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, the report was called Suspended in Time, the ongoing persecution of Rohingya Muslims in Burma. It said the deprivation of Rohingya Muslims' rights by both government and social actors is one of the most profound human rights tragedies of the 21st centuries. In 2015, and I'm again quoting the report, in 2015, as elections approached, the government enacted a package of race and religion laws, each of which discriminates against and restricts the religious freedom of non-Buddhists, particularly Muslims, and diminishes women's rights. The discrimination against Christian communities is also happening, my brothers and sisters. And that is another area that we are, we also feel that that discrimination must also be addressed. According to a report by, again, U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, the hidden plight Christian minorities in Burma from December 2016, it is not old, it is barely new, that from the early 1990s onward, the military increased its occupation of predominantly Christian Chen, Kachin, and Naga areas, destroying churches and crosses. Today, Christians in many of these areas do not have rights to build their churches or to worship according to their faith openly. And so that is what another persecution that is taking place in Rohingya and Rakhine State. The current situation of Rohingyas, my brothers and sisters, according to UN Refugee Agency, almost 123,000 ref Rohingya refugees have fled to Bangladesh after the latest Burmese military attack against the Rohingyas. And we know that many of these refugees were not even allowed to enter Bangladesh because of their own reasons as well. Approximately 400,000 Rohingyas are internally displaced. 400,000 Rohingyas are no longer go back to their villages or go back to their homes. They are either living, living in, in, in forests or in the mountains, but still they are
they are being constantly attacked by the military planes. According to UN aid agencies, Burma continues to block the delivery of food and water and medicine to the Rohingya. That is on top of their atrocities and killing and all, all of that, they are even stopping aid agencies to go and provide these necessary food items. The recent wave of violence, as reported by several media and human rights organizations, has resulted in the death of over 400 people at the hands of Myanmar military. And there are eyewitness accounts of the dead being burnt by the military. Chris Lewa, the director of Arakan Project, an independent group that monitors the violence in Myanmar's Rakhine state, says that the security forces have encircled, encircled villages and then shot people indiscriminately. But what we also found that compared perhaps to the violence that took place in October last year, this is more involvement of the local Buddhist population together with the military. The chief of human rights, UN human rights, Zayed Hussein said that this turn of events is deplorable and the decades of persistent and systematic human rights violations are taking place right now in, in, in Myanmar. The UN in a report published in 2017 February reports that it was very likely that the Myanmar government troops committed crimes against humanity. And that is why we call it a genocide. It is an ethnic cleansing that is taking place in Rohingya. Rohingya villages spanning over 100 kilometers are burned, with over 700 buildings burned down as documented by satellite images obtained by Human Rights Watch. So this is not something that we are just making up these things. These are all of these atrocities that are being documented by the independent human rights groups. The UN, UN Amnesty International and others are asking them to de-escalate the situation that the Myanmar military is, is, is doing. Here I would also say that in 1991, a Nobel Peace Prize was given to Aung San Suu Kyi, who at that time received the Nobel Peace Prize because of her commitment for democracy and human rights. But my brothers and sisters, we have seen time and again in the last so many years that Aung San Suu Kyi has been very quiet when it comes to killing of Rohingya that is taking place or the killing of Christians that is taking place in, 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 in Myanmar. She has been very quiet and she has refused to call it an ethnic cleansing. She has refused and she showed her anger when a BBC reporter who happened to be a Muslim asked her difficult question. So she, in, in, after the interview, said that I didn't know that she was a Muslim and I was, I was about to give an interview to a Muslim. So it shows her hatred as well. That That is why many of the petitions that we are seeing, online petitions that change.org as well, asking the, uh, uh, the commission that gives Nobel Peace Prize to take back the Peace Prize from Aung San Suu Kyi. In the words of Martin Luther King, I remind her that she may have gotten the Nobel Peace Prize at one time, but Martin Luther King said that the greatest tragedy is not the brutality of the evil, but silence of the good people. If there are good people in Burma who are silent, if there are good people in, in Myanmar who are silent, we ask them to stand up against the atrocities that are taking place in, in Rohingya right now. I would like to thank Pope Francis for his statement, his recent statement, in which he condemned the violence against Rohingya and said that their only crime that they are being killed, their only crime is that they are a Muslim and they want to follow their faith. And I, I want to thank Pope Francis for standing up and making such a statement. We demand as stated by Amnesty International and other human rights organizations, that the Myanmar authorities to take immediate steps to address the unfolding situation in Rakhine State, ordering members of all state security forces to halt the killing 
and, and of the Rohingyas and the violation of international law must be enforced. Sushi and the government in Myanmar must take a moral position and rein in their social insecurity forces. Security and stability must be restored by the, for the minority communities. Publicly condemn human rights violation against the Rohingya in Rakhine State. Granting human rights organizations, humanitarian organizations, as well as independent journalists and local and international human rights monitors to go and, and document what is happening in Rakhine State and provide the necessary food and water to the suffering people. We also demand initiating an independent, impartial, effective in investigation with the assistance of the UN. We ask our government to take immediate steps in reaching out to the government of Burma and Myanmar in asking them to implement effective strategies to control this violence and at the same time following international laws. At this occasion, we also would like to thank the government of Bangladesh that yes, they are providing assistance to hundreds and thousands of Rohingya Muslims, but we also see that it is not enough. And we have seen that many of those refugees were turned back. We understand the difficulty that Bangladesh is facing, but at the same time, we, we remind the government of Bangladesh that it is their human rights duty it is their duty as Muslims to take care of the fleeing refugees who are coming to Bangladesh for shelter, for food and water, and for their children's security. And we as American Muslims can offer our support to the government of Bangladesh. Our relief organizations, American Muslim relief organizations, we are here. We can help the government of Bangladesh if they give us permission to go and take care of the refugees in the refugee camp. Alhamdulillah, كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. My brothers and sisters, the most important thing that we must never forget is raising our hands in front of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to help the Muslims of Burma and asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to alleviate the sufferings of Muslims of Burma. Ya Allah, Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you to end this persecution of Muslims of Burma that is taking place. Ya Rab, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, we ask you to show mercy to the people, to the Muslims of Myanmar, to the Muslims of Rohingya. Ya Rabbul Alameen, we ask you to help the Muslims of Myanmar and help Muslims of Rohingya to bring, go back to their families, to go back to their villages, to go back to their homes in security and peace. Ya Rabbul Alameen, we ask you to give us tawfiq, the ability to stand against any oppression, any injustice that takes place anywhere in the world. Jazakallah khair, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you and your families. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. Rabbana khfir lana wa li walidayna wa lil mu'minina yawma yaqoom al-hisab. Ibad Allah rahimakumullah, inna Allah ya'mara bil-adhi. والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفاشاء والمنكر أقم الصلاة